Hey everybody, PC Outcast here, back with more Everlasting Summer, and this time we're on the cusp. I've brought us all the way up here to the beginning of the bad end for Lena, I believe, anyway. If I don't interfere here, this should set off a chain of events that uh, leads to the bad, bad end. So let's see how that goes. I decided that whatever happens, it doesn't concern me. But on the other hand, how can I remain indifferent? Am I a real man? What are you doing? I ran over to the fallen girl and tried to figure out if she was still alive at all. Are you completely out of your mind? If you want me to leave to shut up or do anything else, fine. But this is turning into a complete madhouse. Maybe you need a straitjacket so nobody else will get injured. Lena stood, clenching her fist. You could even break your hand with such a blow. You... you... you don't understand anything! The tears welled up, flowing down her face, and she fled from the square. It seemed to me that I could still hear Lena sobbing while I was bringing Alyssa around. Finally, she came back to consciousness. You are alive? Are you okay? Alyssa moved her jaw from left to right. I'll live. I helped her up. I told you about her. Well, that doesn't matter now. You have to get to the infirmary. Okay, we can skip this part. I'm gonna skip too far. Just in case. Oh. I didn't. Wait, did I miss something there? Uh. Let's scan refuse. Somehow I woke up in my apartment. Okay. It didn't trigger any emotions at all. Yet another day of my life, that's all. I got out of bed, went up to the computer. A message window flashed in the taskbar. Sat down, stared at the monitor. Somebody wrote me. And somebody still needs me. Oh, this is the wake up part. Okay. Next day. And uh, we already went through all this in the good end. Well, okay, so we're gonna sleep together, I guess. I don't know. She wistfully gazed out the window, but what do you want? I... Well, really, what do I want? I skip, skip, skip. Lena laughed. Or she you want that? She frowned. She smiled. Well, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Don't... Hold on. Don't you think that this is way too fast? Why? She smiled and looked at me in such a way that I immediately felt ready to drown in her eyes. You're sure, aren't you? I am. I whispered quietly. That exact moment, I truly loved Lena. I wanted to hold her tighter and never let go. And she felt the same, of course. Time flashed by way too fast and we became one. When I woke up, it was already dark outside. I got out of bed, put on my trousers, and had a stroll around the room. What was that? Just an animal instinct, or maybe it was something more. No, it's all wrong, completely wrong. I'm stuck in this camp, I've lost my chance to get out of here, and most of all, I'm with a girl who probably has a split personality. Okay, we already read this. I gave uh, Lena a gentle nudge on the shoulder. She opened her eyes. Good morning, well, evening, in fact. Hi. She smiled tenderly. Time to get up, sleepyhead. Are you in a hurry? Well, no, but we're completely alone together in this camp. So what? She looked, took a good look at me. Well, nothing. When will Olga return? Is it that important to you? She got a heavy look on her face. Well, without food, we're gonna die here. I laughed. You're free to leave then. She looked away towards the wall. But how can I leave? On the bus, of course. There are no buses here. Then why do you think there's a bus stop for a bus route 410 here? Frankly, I don't know. I told Olga that I had some matters to urgently resolve here with you and we'd come later. What? I felt like I'd been struck by lightning. I didn't know what I should be more surprised about, the fact that there are buses passing here or by the fact that the camp leader agreed to leave two pioneers behind in an empty camp, camp just like that. What I said. You mean that we can leave? Go on, no one's holding you. She said all that 
that while sitting, sitting utterly still. In fact, so still that her words gave me a grave, cold chill. Okay, I'm sorry that I reacted that way. It's just everything that's happened today has been a total surprise for me. You didn't look too surprised a few hours ago. I have probably said something wrong. Completely wrong. Well, don't get offended. We won't be staying here till the end of times, right? If there's a way to leave. Lena didn't say anything. I looked at her back and tried to understand what she's thinking. Fine. She exclaimed cheerfully after a pause, then jumped off the bed and started, dressing, tr started to dress quickly. Come on, pack your stuff. Meet me at the square in ten minutes. Le Lena leaned over and gave me a passionate kiss. All right. I stepped out of her cabin and ran to the camp leader's cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pack. I tossed my winter clothing in a bag, shoved my phone into my pocket, and headed to the square. Hmm. Fifteen minutes have passed already, but Lena still, still wasn't here. I justified it with the fact that she has lots of stuff to pack, and accordingly she needs much more time to get ready. Hmm. However, she didn't come even in half an hour, and I started to suspect something. My legs ushered me to her cabin before I realized it. I the door open and saw Lena lying on the bed. Everything around her was soaked in blood. The bed sheets, the blanket, the floor was wet with blood, and I can see a huge slit on Lena's forearm. I ran to her and started shaking her by her shoulders. Lena! Lena! Why? She was still conscious. Hi, Simeon. A weak smile froze on her lips. Hang on, hey, don't you pass out. I'll think of something right now. Listen, everything's going to be fine. You're not going to die. Of course, I didn't believe it myself. Lena had slit her veins from her elbow all the way down to her wrist. It was a deep cut, and given all the time I'd spent waiting for her at the square, she'd blood a lot. Probably even an ambulance wouldn't do anything by now, and here in, an, in the empty camp away from the world, Lena had zero chance of survival. How stupid can you be? I embraced and held her tightly, tears running down my cheeks, disappearing in her hair. I've never cried so hard in my entire life. Ool, why did you have to cut down the road? Everyone else does it across the street. You cut down the road. Sorry. It happened as it did, she muttered faintly. But why? Why? I'm tired. So tired. Lena went silent. I looked straight into her eyes. She was still conscious, but the last flicker of life was quickly dying in her. I'm so tired of it all. Wearing a mask. Suffering. I just wanted to be with you. But you left me too. I never went anywhere. Here I am. Why? What have you done? I'm sorry. I was choked with tears, unable to say anything. I'm sorry. I'll be seeing you. Later. I embraced her even tighter. Lena's breath was getting weaker, and soon enough it stopped forever. Horror struck. I jumped away from the bed. My eyes went dark. My heart was beating wildly, and I spotted the blood-stained knife lying on the floor. A moment later, I was holding it in my hands. The blade halted a hair's breadth away from my wrist. But why? What would, that, what would that help? I sat there, completely freaked out, and just stared at Lena. No, you aren't dead. I exploded with hysterical laughter. Come on, sleepyhead! It's time to wake up! I said softly and shook her by the shoulders. But Lena didn't wake up. What am I... I... What have I done? I jumped out of the cabin in horror and ran like mad. I don't know how much time passed, but I finally wore myself out and collapsed on the ground. Hostile silence was all around me, and only the stars looked down on me in quiet rebuke. These were the same stars that Lena admired yesterday. Yet another crying spell tore me apart. Why? Why did she do it? Because I left her? Where had I gone? I never left her. I wasn't going to. Only at this moment did I realize that she was truly important to me. I realized that despite all her quirks, everything that happened today, 
Everything had happened during the short period of our acquaintance. She'd suddenly become the most precious thing in my life. And I... I instantly forgot about her, about her feelings, as soon as I heard about that damned bus. Indeed, I it can't justify her act, but how could I have stopped thinking of her at all? I lay there for a long time, watching the stars. <sighs> the trees were peacefully swaying in the gentle night breeze above my head. The trees didn't give a damn about what was happening to me. The landscape seemed familiar. Suppressing my tears, I headed back towards the camp. Everything here seemed to be the same as yesterday, as a few days ago. The square, Genda's memorial, the cabins of the pioneers, Lena's cabin. I was all torn up inside. It felt like the pain would tear my body into millions of little pieces any moment now. I fell to my knees and began punching the ground until my fists were completely stained with blood. If only I'd realized just a bit earlier. Just a moment earlier. I'm not asking for more. She was so... so... Even the slightest of hints was enough for her. Only at this moment did I realize that Lena had died. And if part of me had died with her. Probably the part of me that I would call the best. I came to my senses after a while, standing in her cabin. The blood had dried up already. The moonlight was no longer reflecting in it. I went to her bed and sat down next to Lena's body. I was terribly afraid to be here, but I felt that I had to tell her something. I'm sorry, I started. It's far too late, of course, but if you can hear me out there somewhere, just remember, please... I'll love you forever, for the rest of my life. And that was the plain truth. Sorry that I ignored your feelings. I'm sorry that I always thought about only myself. I'm sorry for everything. It was me who should have died, not you. I covered her body with a blanket and slowly left the cabin. I regained consciousness at the bus stop. So, running away, scumbag? I muttered darkly to myself. I couldn't stand to stay a single minute longer in this camp. Lena will never come back. I can't justify what I've done. I'll just wait for the bus that will take me away from here. I didn't give the slightest damn about what's going to happen to me tomorrow or in an hour. I don't care about answers. I don't care about how I got here. Soon enough, I saw a glimmer of dim light in the distance. Somehow, I wasn't surprised at all. In a minute, I was sitting in an empty number 410 bus and was looking into the dark of the night through a weather-beaten window. My mind was blank. Everything that makes us human, feelings, emotions, aspirations, suffering, I left it all back there at the Pioneer Camp. Now all I have is this night and the empty bus. There's no more future, no more present. If I died tomorrow, that would only mean that yet another human body had ceased to exist. The real me died there a few hours ago. Ah. <sighs> what an ending. I don't know how much time passed, but the fatigue overtook me. I wasn't going to fight it, as it made absolutely no difference whether I'm sleeping or awake. I could barely hold my eyes open, and soon enough I passed out. Day... whatever. There are moments when reality becomes unimportant, insignificant, unworthy of attention. There are moments when your spirit torment, your spiritual torment overshadows everything else. And even if the world ended, you would not notice. If a knife were to pierce you, you would not notice. Even boiling for eternity in the cauldrons of hell would seem like just a minor inconvenience. After all, there are problems more important than that. 
When I opened my eyes, I realized that something was wrong. It took a while for clarity of thought to return. Finally, I realized that I'm not in a bus, but in my old apartment. Well, that was to be expected. As if I'd spent a whole week preparing for an exam and at the last minute had spectacularly failed. And the result of this failure was my return to the real world. However, now it didn't seem any more real to me than the Sovjolna Pioneer Camp. No wonder. Reality is what you hear, feel, touch, and taste. And all that was really there. That world was real to the smallest detail. Sometimes it seemed more like it was my past life that was a fiction. And now I have to remember how to exist here. The why. If I felt like a man who'd been thrown out of a car, I felt like a man who had been thrown out of a car at full speed without even noticing it, and was left lying on the roadside with broken arms and legs while the car disappeared into the night, taking with it the last traces of hope. Lena. Her image surfaced in my fevered brain so clearly that I wanted to cry unbearably. No, I wanted to shout tearing out clumps of hair, smashing my fists on the wall while making inhuman screams. However, my soul was empty. I tried in vain to find at least the echoes of pain, guilt, or pity for her, but nothing came. I was just lying there and staring at the ceiling. I was not at all interested in how and why I came back. After all, who cares about the process of selling your soul to the devil? All the legal formalities, the contract, signatures, stamps, and seals. What is more important is the result. And this is the result I got. Now, it's not that I was sent back to reality. If I had gotten to the destination on that bus, it would hardly have changed anything for me. In this case, the result is what happened to Lena. And the reason is my actions. I was absolutely sure about that. After all, she could not just do that for no reason. No, Lena's not like that. So it's all my fault. It's hard to live knowing that you were the reason for someone else's death. As if I personally held the knife calmly and carefully slit open her wrists and watched her die, and then just ran away. Of course, I couldn't do anything in that situation, but I still felt that I'd behave like a coward. No, even worse. Although, does it really matter what the best definition of my actions is? I cursed myself for remaining so calm while thinking about the situation. After all, I should be mourning Lena and blaming myself, but now nothing is up to me. If I was not able to, not able to back then, I started shivering. My body was trembling and it was getting hard to breathe. Self-preservation instincts overtook guilt for a while and I staggered to the kitchen to drink a sedative. They can always be found in the cupboard of every antisocial person like me. Once I'd taken half the tablets that were in the packet, I returned to the room and turned on the computer. Remaining in silence was unbearable. I played the first random song and soon realized that it was probably the most depressing piece of music I had on my hard drive. However, I didn't want to turn it off. The background noise helped dampen my thoughts. I had to decide what to do with my life next. I was sure about one thing. Everything that happened in the camp, my appearance in it, my unexpected return, I didn't care about any of it. And not just that, I didn't care about the context or the reasons for those events either. The only thing that mattered was Lena. I horribly stumbled over the word was. Indeed, she's gone. Of course, it's possible that it was just a dream and she never existed in the first place. But then again, our real world could just be someone's raving delusion as well. Why not? If people suffer from losing their loved ones here, why, why should I think of Lena's death there as just the result of my sick imagination? I saw it all with my own eyes. I felt the shock, fear, and fright. Damn it. For me, it's not that it was reality. It still is reality. Is and will be. And I'm sure I'm not daydreaming. That would be better if I dreamt that. The dreadful howl of guitars boomed from the speakers. It sounded like a requiem. A requiem for me. 
Now I have to live with a sense of guilt? No, I won't take it. My mind wasn't exactly a paragon of stability, but... Not even a man with a stable mind could withstand shocks like this. And I suddenly feel that I'm going mad. I already feel like I'm going mad. I tried to suppress all these thoughts. No, not to forget, just to give myself some rest. Just for a minute. But it didn't work. Pain racked my body again and again. I was already starting to feel it physically. However, physical pain is always weaker than mental. I fell to the floor, clasped my knees, and began rocking back and forth in a fetal position. Blood pounded in my head so heavily that it felt like my skull would shatter any moment now. I hit a table leg, and a little candle rolled out from under a pile of papers. A little one, 20 centimeters long. It was bent and at almost 90 degree angle, but still remained retained its shape. The wick protruded from one end. Searched for a lighter and lit up the candle. Let it be in the memory of Lena. Maybe in another world she's feeling better than... Ugh. I sat on the floor and watched as the wax slowly dripped onto my fingers. I felt no pain at all. Probably my nervous system was so exhausted that it was unable to transmit the pain impulses to my brain. The fire calmed me a little. I just watched the flame and did not think about anything. Finally, at least some peace of mind. Hmm. Candle was halfway done. Suddenly I imagined that my life is this very candle. Not just mine, any person's life. All that we have been given from above is its full length. But anything can happen. The wind may blow, the holding hand may tremble, or the wick may burn out. And a life will end before it should have. But after all, each candle can be different. Such as this one, nine cents. One twice as thick, twenty, and huge ones as thick as the handle of a shovel. One, I guess that's one meter and eighty-five. I wonder, did Lena's candle burn out ahead of its time, or was it just smaller than the other ones? Though I doubt there can be one smaller than mine. I rotated the candle in my hands. How interesting is that? I can blow out the flame any moment, and that's it. But in the meantime, life is not wax. You can't combine two small candles to make one of medium size. I would love to give the remains of mine to Lena. To anyone who needs it more than I do. Why would I need it? I do not feel pain from the heated wax. Its flame does not give me any warmth. It hardly illuminates the room. To put it bluntly, a waste of ropes, wax, and oxygen. I blew out the candle. This action evoked absolutely no emotions in me. I slowly stood up and headed to the bathroom. Hmm. Is he gonna kill himself too? Yep. Cut down the road, not across the street. He's got a smile on his face too. Everyone else cuts across, but you're going right down the... The image of Lena appeared before my eyes. She was smiling. We'll definitely meet again. I'm so sorry. Warm water, shadows, and dying dreams have finally brought me some peace. It really might be that I never actually went to that camp. Or that I never actually came back. But does it really matter now? I almost physically felt Lena's embrace. Everything will be alright. We'll catch the bus together and ride it to the place where nobody will find us. Where we'll be happy together. My strength left me and I started to sink into the water that was already spilling over the edge of the tub. We will surely meet. Forgive me. Uh. It's down the road, not across the street. Oh, God.
Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, contents, key points, a prologue, and an epilogue. And there's no book which, if you read it again, would not reveal new details you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every... Well, ugh. yeah, that's one of the bad endings. I'm sure there's all kinds of good stuff still waiting ahead of us with the other bad endings. But we'll try and have a good ending next time. Uh, and I hope you guys will join me. Thanks for joining me for this. We'll see you next time.